Today in the Smart Wood Shop, I'm going to show you the Festool Domino DF500. I'm going to show you what it is, how to set it up, and how to use it. I'm Ron Polk. This is the Smart Wood Shop. If you'd like to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself or one of my smart workbenches, there's a link in the description of this video down below. The Domino is a handheld mortising tool. It doesn't require any big machinery. It doesn't require a big shop. I use this on the job out in the field doing remodels and building new homes on a regular basis. I've had this Domino for over 10 years. It's a tool that I purchased. I decided that it looked like a, a tool that would work well and be efficient and provide me the ability to quickly build a very strong joint. So I bought this tool myself. Festool didn't provide it. They're not asking me to make this video. This is just my thoughts on it that I'm sharing with the Smart Woodshop family. Basically, the Domino is just a mortising machine that creates a mortise in two pieces of wood you want to join together, and then you use a floating tenon, which is called a Domino, to slip into those mortises and connect the wood together. It can be used to join material like this at a 90 degree. Also, it can be used to flush up wider panels like this. The Domino has a cutter. It's a round cutter that pushes out and then moves side to side to create the width of the Domino. Now, the Dominoes themselves, the four that I use uh, most commonly are the smallest one, which is the 5 by 30. That means that it's 5 millimeters thick and 30 millimeters long. 6 by 40, I probably use this domino the most. 8, and it's a little longer, by 50. 10 by 50. So the thicker the material is, the heavier the demand is on the joint, then I would choose the uh, appropriate domino to fit. To have the proper thickness of mortise, the top to bottom, so that it fits snugly, that is determined not by any settings on the domino. It's determined by the bit that's installed. It comes with a six millimeter cutter. And then I picked up the accessory kit that comes with four cutters all the way from a five, a six, an eight, and a 10. They're all the same length, it's just the diameter. When you buy the basic tool, it comes with the tool itself, the wrench to change the cutter. It comes with a six millimeter cutter, the power cord, and in a sustainer box. There's uh, accessory kits you can get that come with a selection of dominoes, uh, additional cutters, and also some accessories for helping in cutting the mortises, some layout and things like that. Change the cutter, the included wrench, on the top of the machine to the right hand side, there is a little lever and you just take the tool and wedge it under there, it's really easy to do, and just pop it up. When you do that, it unlocks the fence so it comes completely off of the machine and this exposes the cutter. Now to loosen the cutter, on the right hand side of the machine, there's another button. You push in on that, rotate the cutter until it locks the shaft, and then just take the same wrench and give it a little turn. And then choose the cutter to match the domino that you're going to use. And again, I have a five, a six, an eight, and a 10, which takes care of all of the dominoes that this particular machine will install. So I choose the cutter. I'm gonna put the six back on. Just rotate it onto the shaft. Once it's snugged down, again, push the button to lock the shaft. And just a barely a turn, just a little uh, a turn like that, and that's all it needs. And then to reinstall the fence, there are two shafts that go into these sleeves here. Align those up. No buttons to push, just push it in. And there's a little click and it's locked back in. 
That's how easy it is to change the cutter. The fence on the domino goes from zero to 90 degrees, and then it has a scale that you can stop anywhere along the way as well as some detents for commonly used uh, settings like 45 degrees. To adjust the fence, there's just a lever on the left-hand side to lock it into position. Now the fence can be adjusted up and down depending on where in the material that you want to cut the domino. So in a piece of material like this, which is 18 millimeters, and I want to get pretty close to center, although I will say it isn't that necessary because I'm, you're always cutting the material with the fence from the same side. So if you're slightly biased one way or the other, it's going to match up with your mating cut. So to make that setting, there's a scale on the left hand side of the machine on the back side of the fence and it goes from 0 to 30 in millimeters of course. On the right hand side of the machine there's another lever. You turn that to lock it or to unlock it. So we unlock it and then I can just move the fence up and down to, until this pointer is on the, the uh, dimension I'm going for. So in my case I'm going to set it on 9 and lock it in. Now the cutter, the center of the cutter is 9 millimeters from the fence. So when I place the fence on my material and make the cut, I know that again the center of the cut is going to be at 9 millimeters. They also have a stepped stop on the left side right below where that scale is you have to read it a little differently than this scale. So the scale again goes uh, absolute, it's, an, it's a number that reflects the distance again from the bottom of the fence to the center of your cutter. The step stop block that they have is actually determined by the thickness of your material. So if I set it on 16 and then move the fence down to that block, it's going to actually be eight millimeters from the fence to the center of the cutter. Now I want to set the depth of the mortise, how far the cutter is going to come out and cut into the material. I determine that by the domino I'm using. So in this case I have a 40 millimeter domino. This situation, which is one of the most common for me, the depth of the mortise is equal between the, the two pieces. So I've got that 40 millimeter domino. I'm going to put half into this, half into that. To set that on the left hand side of the machine, off, you know, off to the side, there's a lock button. It's black. And then there's a green lever that you can move all the way from 12 millimeters to 28 millimeters. So if I were going to make these cuts in equal to the two pieces, and I know I've got a 40 millimeter domino, I'm going to set it on 20. So now the cutter will come out from the surface here where it's going to be up against the material. It's going to come out 20 millimeters. In a scenario like this, where I am going into uh, 18 millimeter material, if I went 50-50 or 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters, the cutter would actually come out the back side and the domino would stick out. In this case, I would set the stop, the depth stop, to 15 millimeters to make this cut. And then when I'm ready to make this cut, I'll drop it down to 25. The power switch is right in the middle. It's convenient right where your hand is. You push it forward and it locks in. This starts the machine. When you're ready to stop it, you push down on the back of that lever and it snaps back. And finally, the dial to adjust the width of your mortise is this green dial that is on the top of the machine to the left hand side and it's got three positions, narrow, medium, widest. To turn this, the motor actually has to be running. When using a domino, 
it's necessary to use dust collection. It isn't just to collect the dust for your health and keeping the job site clean. It also has to do with the machine running. You want to clear that dust out as it's making that mortise. If you don't, it'll dull your bit, it'll clog. The machine just will not perform the way it's designed to perform. The dust collection uh, port is built right in and included with the domino. And the power cord is a twist lock. It goes right on the back. Here's an example of the cut you get by rotating this dial for the width. So again, it isn't to have a wider domino. It is for having some play for assembly. So the same domino fits in all three of these. Snug fit, and then a little bit looser fit, and finally quite a bit looser fit. I'm going to leave it up to you to search around and see uh, where you might use this. I'm thinking, um, you know, possibly if you're going to have wood movement or for assembly, so possibly you would maybe set up one or two uh, that would be tight to index, and then the other ones uh, would be more for the purpose of just lining up the top of the surface, and, it, and since you'd have it locked in with these, the, uh, the float in these wouldn't matter that much. Now you know what the domino does and how to set it up, but how do you use it? I'll start by showing you a simple uh, single domino connection. This might be, say, if you're building a cabinet face frame and I wanted to connect uh, the two pieces like this. I know that I have the six millimeter cutter already in the machine, so that part is set and ready to go. I want to set up the cutter so that it is going to fall in the middle of the thickness of the material. So I'll set the fence up to nine. For the depth of the cut, I'm using a 40 millimeter domino. This is set on 20. The machine is all set up. I'm going to use the narrow cut for the mortise and I have the fence at 90 degrees. When I'm using the domino, I don't want to put my hand down in the front here. Even though I know I'm only going to cut halfway through this material, I just don't want to have any possibility of that cutter coming out and cutting my fingers. So when I do this, I'll either have my hand over to the side here, holding it in, or firmly down on the handle to align the cut. There's a very precise scale, a see-through scale, on the top of the fence. So if I want to find center, I'll just put that hairline right on my mark, and then I'm ready to make the cut. If this weren't just a sample cut and I was doing this for production, I'd have all my styles and rails cut. I would mark all the locations for my mortises, make all of the mortises, and then finally for assembly, I'd put glue in all the mortises, install the domino, and then put them together and clamp them up. I know that with the domino, it's gonna fit uh, flush perfectly on the surfaces. And of course, the layout lines would assure the spacing that I needed. Another task that I call on the domino to do for me quite frequently in the field is to attach panels, to put panels together. Now, typically they're a lot larger than this. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. I can spend time laying lines out with measurements, but I usually don't. I'll just put the panels together and just visually mark where I want them to be. They'll be close enough. In this case, this is a pretty short panel, so I really only need to mark about the middle. I'm gonna also put a domino in from each end, but to do those dominoes, those mortises, I use the fence itself. On the fence, there are two stops, they're spring-loaded, and so when I am going to cut in from an edge, I just push against the fence and it'll butt up to that stop. Coming from the other side, same thing, it'll butt into that stop. So that will give me the exact setting from the edge to the center of the mortise, which is 38 millimeters. If I were working with narrower material like this, I couldn't use those stops because 38 would it just really allow me to do one and I'd want to do two. And in that case, there is a very precise scale on the fence, and I would 
just, again, I probably wouldn't even bother with lines. I would just line, them, line up the material uh, with whatever setting I want to go to the center. And again, it's, it's a hairline scale. It's really easy to use. So I've got my mark and I've also labeled my board A and A. I do that a lot too in the field because I have multiple pieces. And so this would, would be the only one I'd call A, the next one would be B, C, etc. Uh, or I could do one, two, three, whatever you want, just so that you know that when you're in production, you're going to do a lot of these cuts and then you're going to assemble when they're all cut. Finding the right position to make the cut here is all about the camera, not about the machine. No matter how many times I do this, I always have to smile. I just love the ease of putting this together and the fact that it's just absolutely perfect edge to edge and right on the surface as well. In this last example, I'm going to show you how to put uh, two boards together at 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and use three on this one just to show you how to do it. But of course, I wouldn't use three dominoes on a project this narrow. I'm using a 6x40 domino, so I'm going to have to offset it and cut two different depths of mortise so that I don't go through this 18 millimeter piece. I'll set the depth for these first three mortises to 15. And then the spacing down from the top is still at 9 millimeters because I'm going to be matching up with the piece, uh, 18 mil piece going in this way. I've got the center mortise mark on both pieces, but again, I didn't mark the edges. I'm going to go ahead and use these stops again. When I'm making this cut, it's a pretty thin piece of material, and that's all I have to ensure that I'm, you know, 90 degrees to the face of this. So there is an accessory that I picked up from Festool. It has two knobs that screw right into the base plate of the domino. Now I have this surface here to go up against the face and this will really help to ensure that I'm square that my mortise goes in 90 degrees to the face. Now I want to make this mortise deep enough to handle the balance of that 40 millimeter so I'm going to go to 25. After the glue dries, I am confident that this joint is not going to come apart. I hope this video answers any questions you have about using the domino and how to set it up and some practical applications for it. There's a lot more uses for this tool than I have shown and that I even use. I'm not really a woodworker. I'm a carpenter. I build homes and do remodels. And this is a production monster that gives me uh, the efficiency, the production, the quality that I need. But there's a lot of woodworkers out there that use these in their furniture production as well. But I'll leave you to go find them. They have a lot more skill and knowledge than I have about that kind of woodworking. Hey, if you enjoy these tool tip videos, if you'd like to see me make more, then be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna join the Smart Woodshop family, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know when I put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.